Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another episode of NBS Radio. Uh, today's occasion for an episode is that actually tomorrow, in particular, marks the midterm mark for uh, this term. So this is going to be our midterm report show, and um, I looked back on the old midterm show from last term, and we had Ghost and Bobarino joining me. Well, in this show, uh, maintaining, maintaining some continuity, you've got Ghost and I. So, um, Ghost, go ahead and say hello. Hello. And filling in for Bob uh, is Ruben. Hello. It seems like it's been, it's becoming a common thing that I jump in uh, completely unprepared. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. You, you always gotta, you always gotta, you know, get thrown into things like, it's just like a, it's like the token. Okay, let's throw Ruben into it. Measure, and then all of a sudden, our audience, our live audience here in attendance, they just grow. It's like, oh, we see Ruben. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure to do that. But anyway, getting to the point of today's show, uh, as a midterm report, we're going to be going through the progress that each of the ministries have made thus far into the term, and uh, we're each going to speak a little bit on uh, kind of a little bit peek behind the curtain about what's been going on what's been achieved, and uh, what direction we're headed in. So I actually think this panel will be quite good for that, um, because obviously Ruben, staffer in multiple ministries, executive deputy minister of communications, um, and then you've got Ghost and I, both ministers, pretty close to the government, uh, about as close as you can be, unless you're the delegate who's elected to lead said government, in which case uh, we've both been there and done that also. So... You, uh, you, you know that we're the guys to do it. I was going to go in alphabetical order. Um, and I think the first, the first ministry in alphabetical order would be communications, which is my wheelhouse. So, without any further ado, what has comms been up to? There's a lot of cool things that I'm, I'm pretty proud about in comms, and there's a lot of things that my staffers have to be proud about. Um, there will be a midterm report. I'm not sure if those have falling out of fashion like written midterm reports but one will be coming from me nonetheless because they're not out of fashion in my ministry i will be doing them um but for the sake of the show so far we are well on track with our flagship publication of the north star right on schedule actually two months in with uh, two releases so of course we had uh issue number 29 and issue number 30 that just released a few days ago uh, a couple days ago and so September and October have both seen NBS releases. So that is running right on schedule, which is always nice to see. And I extend my thanks to Ruben, especially on that, for keeping me organized in that area. And then, <laughs> and then planning is already underway for issue number 31. So we're chugging right along as far as TNS is concerned. Um, and kudos to you, Ghost, and uh, your deputy ministers for getting those distributions, like, immediately after we publish something. So, that way, all of our friends from abroad can uh, read TNS. And rumor has it uh, that there's a really cool article in TNS for the October issue uh, by Picairn. Picairn, Picairn. You should definitely go read it. It is the War on the North article. And it is fantastic. Ruben, you want to hype up that article a little bit more? Because I know <laughs> I know you especially yeah. liked it. So Yeah, I I really liked it. Like I liked it so much that I gave a special shout out in my editor's note and actually in the uh, private um what is it called? Channels for communications. So it's a really good article. It's really interesting actually. It's very detailed because uh Pickern uh, wrote this in like a day, which is incredible. Like I asked him, hey, what's the status on your article? And he said, I'm almost finished. And I was like, we're a week into, you know, the writing period. And I'm like, whoa, what the hell? This guy is amazing. Um, so, yeah, it's it's absolutely astonishing how good, how well it's written for such a short period of time of writing. Um, yeah, absolutely uh, amazing find. Um, we have here as a staffer, Pickern, or however you say their name. Absolutely amazing. 
kudos to uh, him for um, writing the arguably hardest article in the in, in the this issue of the North Star. Yeah, and if you guys aren't caught up yet, I mean, go to that issue. It's it's pinned to the WFE. You know, it's a dispatch version. There's also a magazine version. We have magazine versions that are wonderfully made by Cash himself. Um, so if you're more into like the creative, like graphic aspect of it, we do offer that. But if you just want the regular dispatch experience, you know, nice and organized, clean text on a page, go over to TNS. Uh, go ahead and read it. Please leave an upvote. Enjoy it. Um, because, yeah, we have a lot of talented writers who have been doing a great job so far in not only, you know, making content like this, but in other areas that we're going to talk about for comms have really just stepped up within the ministry and kind of been like those lightning rods of activity that you always really like to see. And in a way, as far as like Picaren on the subject of him, um, yeah, same thing. Kudos to them. Absolutely. They've been really helpful in a number of, a number of areas for us. And it's always great to see like fresh face up and comers doing things like I'm always going to, um, you know, kind of be in support of that and want that to continue because I was at one point that guy, Ruben is still, and also at one point that guy, you know, so all of us, yeah, you're looking at somebody who has a bright future in both TNP and the ministry. Uh, so go ahead and check that out. I know that our last NBS radio broadcast, we talked about, uh, how we were at war. We did a whole war episode. So if you haven't listened to that, uh, you should definitely go do so. There was also a reading that I did of the Delegates to War Statement, which is a little bit of a different, it's a very, very short video, um, but it's me reading the statement aloud and kind of doing like a like an audio take of that. Um, and this, this article really does well to encapsulate some of our, uh, you know, achievements thus far into the war, which we'll be talking about later when we go to the defense portion. But we talked about articles, what we've got going on with TNS. We are exploring a uh, upcoming issue of the Northern Notes. More details on that in the week or so to come. Um, on the NBS side, we incurred a bit of a editing backlog last term with some of the older shows that we recorded. Um, I'm pleased to announce that that's been completely eliminated. Kudos to Chipoli, Cash, uh, some of our editors. We now have a, des a designated NBS editing team so that when we're finished recording some of these, we have people to pass it off to. Um, so that's something that we kind of set up for like internal organization purposes. And yeah, obviously our goal here on NBS, but also in comms, is that when we record these, we want to share them with people who, you know, might not be available at the times that uh, we host these shows. We know we have listeners all over the world, different time zones, different things going on in their lives. Nothing wrong with that, uh, but we just want to make it as accessible as possible. And accessibility really is the name of the game, which is a great segue into um, the NBS is now available on Spotify, which is something I know that uh, was originally kind of an idea that Ruben had. And then since mm -hmm. then, we, we've kind of taken it and tweaked it a little bit um, to make it more just like up to date with some of the latest shows that um, every every new show from here on out is going to be uploaded both on YouTube and on Spotify. So if you prefer to listen on Spotify, that's absolutely something you have a choice of doing. And so hopefully this kind of, you know, diversify the the way that we kind of make content available from NBS. Right. Because, well, it was originally my idea. I pitched it to a uh, cash and it took some convincing, but after a while, um, I convinced him uh, of the idea and then through the rather slow admin process we made an account and everything was set up and then eventually um, I think it was in a little bit later into the term we actually uploaded a couple of older shows because um, I don't know who it was but someone suggested that we should also upload the old shows I was a little bit hesitant on that, but, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, and now we've uh, completely revamped it and removed the old um, stuff from, like, 2017 or whatever. And now we've uploaded the new um, post-revival 
um, shows, which all look very cool, very neat. I have to say, uh, <laughs> as the person who did it, um, maybe a little bit biased there, but you know, it's really cool, really neat. So go check it out if you have Spotify and use it. Um, you don't need premium, I believe, to uh, listen to the shows. So it's uh, free, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, and it's there. really accessible. It's super easy to listen on the way. I always listen to either the Northern Broadcast uh, servers or the uh, European Broadcast Corporation um, while I'm, I don't know, in the train or something going somewhere. It's it's amazing. <laughs> and that's actually a really good opportunity for a plug. Uh, go ahead and check out our friends, too, over at the EBC. There's nothing wrong with that. In fact, we did a uh, collaboration episode with them where we had President JD of Europea on not even, I think, a month or so ago. So, yeah, I did an interview with him here on NBS. Uh, it was a live show, but, of course, we have recording. So uh, that's up on both YouTube and Spotify. So if you want to go ahead and go back to listen to that interview after you're done listening to today's show, that's absolutely something you can do. A little shameless plug there, since uh, Ruben mentioned the EBS, or the EBC, rather. Uh, but yeah, no, so we eliminated the editing backlog of shows. We've gotten both old shows and new shows uploaded to the YouTube channel. There have been seven new uploads in total so far this term, this uh, being our eighth show. Um, And then uh, kind of like a miscellaneous kind of thing. We have now formed the collaborative design team, which was one of the main aims of Cash for uh, the communications portion of his platform for Delegate. That's something that we went right to work on very early and often. I'm sure you've seen it uh, promoted on the RMB, promoted on Discord, promoted on the forums. That's one of the things as minister I've been very committed to, that if we're going to do something, we are absolutely going to promote it so that people know that it's there and that they know that they can engage with it. So the the cool thing about the collaborative design team is that you don't even realistically have to be a staffer, a member of the executive staff. If you are a resident of TNP who has talent or wants to contribute or could be of help in some way, then you are more than welcome on the collaborative design team. We have uh, a designated channel for it in the executive server. We have, you know, a forum thread where there are, there are no applications processing. You just sign up and you are part of the team and you get to, you know, mingle amongst other people. We have some very talented designers in the region right now. A uh, special shout out to Picarin and Bran. Uh, get well soon, Bran. But uh, yeah, no. It's It's been going well as far as on every single front that you would like it to be. Uh, we're, we're doing well on the broadcasting front, the articles front, the design front, which is kind of something new we've been embarking on for this term or looking down for. Um, and then, yeah, just general management stuff. Gears keep turning. Machine keeps going. Right. And with the collaborative um, design team, I'm usually one of those people who is a little bit hesitant on, you know, allowing non-citizens into the executive staff and stuff like that. But with this thing, because it's so essential to our quote-unquote propaganda mach machine, um, that I'm all for everyone signing up for this. If, you, if you're like me and you only use Canva and are only able to use those really easy softwares and completely incapable of any creative design, even you should sign up to this because it's so cool how you can contribute to the war effort and just general um, executive things <laughs> with uh, your designs. And it's just a really cool opportunity to get involved and it's really fun, at least I think so. Absolutely. And we have an entire dispatch dedicated to some of the art pieces and graphical you know, design kind of things that uh, T and Piers have made in support of our war effort against BOM and TCB. Um, in the description of this video, actually, once it's uploaded, I will be sure to link that dispatch for ease of access so that everyone can see some of the cool stuff we've got going on. But yeah, a lot of those are from uh, design team members, which is always exciting to see. And it's definitely something that uh, started strong, and we're going to 
you know, make sure that it keeps going. And that that's, you know, the number one thing that I prioritize as minister is that this this ministry is still, you know, fresh off of its revival in a way. So we're going to keep that going strong, just both in the way that my predecessor Cash did and the way that I would like to. So, yeah, that is most of uh, comms. Two TNS releases, a future TNN release, seven NBS going on eight episodes, editing backlog cleared, collaborative design team formed, midterm report coming out. That's the TLTR version of it. Except you didn't have to read it because I just said it. I have a question. What's up? What about TNL? Any plans for that? Yes. So TNL is also in the works right now. There is a plan. We have we have uh, writers writing for that. It's not a monthly release, but actually, and this is a little bit of a teaser, but in the next TNS, there's going to be some cool aesthetic things going on with it. So, hey, if you're not someone who reads TNL usually, should maybe look into doing that when the next release comes out. Just a, just a hint. Uh, we're going to keep that between Ruben and I for now, but yes. That, uh, you know, we just got done talking with the design team. Maybe that might have something to do with it, just as a little hint. But yes, TNL is also on the horizon. So plenty of publications coming out. Next up on the docket here, uh, in alphabetic order, is Culture. Of course, Culture's chugging right along with their, uh, they, they produce a culture calendar now to let you know when uh, regional events are taking place. You've got your Music Mondays, your Theme Thursdays, bread and butter of your everyday operations. If you ask me, Culture is one of those things that's a little bit more free-flowing. Uh, regional culture can be whatever you want it to be, and I think that is the beauty of it. But um, when, I, when I asked each of the ministers prior to this broadcast if there's anything that they especially wanted me to include, um, Nutmeg's one reminder is consistency. That's something that's really important to them um, and their ministry, that just these events happen regularly and that, you know, culture is still doing these things to help keep our community together and do stuff like that. And, you know, fun events that people can win and engage with, that's that's really what it's all about. So in shooting for consistency, um, I'd say that's what Nutmeg's been up to. Ruben, are you a staffer in culture? Yeah, I'm a deputy minister of everything, as uh, some people call it. I am. But, um, all right. Uh, yeah, no, the Ministry of Culture is doing pretty good, I'd say. Uh, we're having consistent theme Thursdays, consistent music Mondays. Everything is just, you know, going pretty well. It's nothing extraordinary, there, but, you know, it's just doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, I'm not aware if we're going to do any interregional things, but maybe that might be uh, something Nutmeg and uh, Ghost can look into if they want. Well, and, and, and not to sell it short, but on the on the subject of interregional events, I mean, so far we have had two of them, and I know that Nutmeg himself was, um, you know, involved with the planning of those, obviously. Most recently, the second TNP-TWP Interregional Chess Arena event over on Lee Chess, uh, which I took part in. This was the second tournament between TNP and TWP. Cash and I have been there for both of them. And uh, it's always a fun time when we get to play against the TWPers with uh, Giovanni and all of them. Great time. Um, I'm, sure that, I'm sure it's something that we'll look to continue but I know that, you know, that was something that, you know, culture could extend to other regions from us. We can be cultural exporters in a way to have events with some of our friends from abroad. And that was one such example. Another such example is with the Spirit Halloween Festival that we did with both the Wellspring and Carcassonne. I'm going to pronounce it Carcassonne. Um, I'm not sure if that's right. It could be Carascone, but... Okay, so... Now, now I want to set the record straight because that's been annoying me when I've uh, listened to the broadcast. It's it's a French name, obviously. It's a southern province in France, and it's Carcassonne, not Carcassonne, not Carcassonne, not Tharcassonne, or anything. I'm it's the Carcassonne, Ruben. I'm yeah. Well, that's not an excuse, Carcassonne, or if you want to say it very French. Carcassonne or something like that. 
I'm not French or anything, but yeah, I'll let the Dutchman tell you about French. Yeah, I'll let the Dutchman tell you how to speak French. How would you pronounce it, Ghost? The correct way. <laughs> okay. Very diplomatic. Very. Yeah. No, that's why. That's why he gets the FA portfolio. <laughs> um. No, but yeah, culture. In addition to just aiming for consistency and doing the regular things that you would expect culture to do. You know, sometimes they do get a little bit more flashy and productive with it as far as these interregional events that we have with our friends. And I know that uh, we're definitely looking at getting closer with some of our friends in the Wellspring. So this was an excellent event for that. And um, yeah, celebrate Halloween. Just uh, came up this past month. Next up in alphabetical order. Uh, 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 hold on a second. Was Don't it? sell culture too short because I also want to highlight a few of the. I'll call it experimental because it hasn't. They haven't got it to consistency yet, but they they've had uh, an attempt to reach back into our game server and are, are you know having scheduled games. I know that uh, Wondrous did something with that recently. Uh, by recently, I guess I mean maybe a month ago now at this point. But uh, there there's been an attempt to revitalize that side of things. Oh, we had a lot of the clock. we had a lot of game stuff that was happening before and it never really had a weekly thing. This is something that goes back to when the game side advocates were a new thing and we were trying to unite the two parts of our community and have them do something in common. So it's I think it's very significant that culture is putting some investment in that area again. And it doesn't have the consistency of the other stuff, but, you know, to be fair, it's a little more complicated to schedule uh, game stuff. So I know they're still figuring that out. We're in the middle of the term. There's still time to make that more of a regular thing, but that's a very encouraging sign. Also, I think there was an event with Euro, but it's kind of blurring together. I can't tell if it was the tail end of the previous term or if it was the beginning of this one, but I'm pretty sure... We had a joint event with Hero as well that culture was involved in. And of course, Delegate Delirium, right around the time of the elections, we finally did that again after, what, two years not doing it? Three years? So Wole is our new king of the north. Ghost has been dethroned. He is now just a minister. Oh, I've been retired. No, you've been dethroned. Oh, yeah, we did the 10 Years of Friendship Festival. Yep, that's what it was. Because I remember on NBS, we promoted the event. That broadcast that I was talking about, the interview with JD, that was an accompaniment of the 10 More Years Festival of Friendship with Europea. So that's what it was. Yeah, and, you know, any time that there's a, an event that's being planned and it's delayed and, you know, there's trouble with it, when it finally happens, you know, breathe a sigh of relief and celebrate it. Because who could forget that uh, TSP festival we had that took an entire year to to finally get launched. So, yeah, you know, sometimes the, the events die and sometimes you're really stubborn and you, you get them through and you actually pull it off. So, yeah, uh, got to correct the record there. Culture did three interregional events this term. Yeah, and those are not easy to plan. It's not one of those things where you just go in someone's DMs, hey, let's do this. I mean, for a lot of these, you have different servers and you got to get the communities together and you got to make sure the invites are distributed and you got to put together a schedule. You got to think about what events would be fun. So it's, it's something that takes a considerable amount of effort and that amount of effort cannot be understated. So kudos to Nutmeg and the rest of his team on, on that for, you know, allowing us to enjoy these events in the way that we have in part, thanks to them. And as a little teaser, thanks to you did teaser for comms, I would just point out Culture's got some holidays that they've got some stuff uh, to oh, yeah. figure out on on releasing for us uh, coming up later this month. So Good day. It's... yeah, they still they have still stuff some stuff to to work on. Yes, I'm sure uh, Nutmeg is looking forward to that and has something in store for that. So yeah, definitely look forward to that. On another note. Switching over to the defense side of things, there's also been a lot happening here. Uh, as, you, as you might imagine, the military gets pretty active when uh, we're at war. So, um, yeah, it's great to have ComFed here. But also, 
I'd like to speak on this a bit because as a returning general to the NPA, there's a lot that I've been excited about, and there's a lot that I've gotten to see firsthand from the Ministry of Defense and what's going on with that. Uh, first off, I, I've told him this in private, but I'll just say it on the air. Ghost was 100% right uh, when he said that a war would lead to a recruitment. It, it absolutely has. Um, the, the MPA's membership has surged. We talked about that in our two war episode. Um, but again, it's continued and it's especially continued with the thing that I most want to talk about, which is the formation of the TNP militia. Uh, that is something that I am the general test with overseeing. So in addition to just being a regular NPA general, I am now also the, you know, general for the militia. Um, and what that entails is basically, it is a way for people who may not be able to be on Discord or can't really be available at the times that we would otherwise need them to be in order to participate. It's a way for them to can still be able to contribute to the war effort without leaving the nation state's site. And that last bit is crucial because the, the, the core mission of the militia is to be able to support and reinforce what TNP does on the battlefield without having to leave the NS site. What that means is that we are effectively sending them standing orders via Telegram. Anyone can sign up on their nation to receive these messages. And a dispatch is maintained by me with standing orders so that anyone at any time can look in and see what the new standing orders are and execute on them accordingly. Um, we've done a great job with this so far i think right about now we have over 35 members of the militia excluding me and uh that's obviously going to be a uh, pretty good utility for us going forward as far as um some of these stronger holds we've been doing lately which we're definitely going to get into but the tnp militia is just another another way for people to you know be able to engage with what defense is doing Previously, you had the special forces or the auxiliary, and you kind of had to choose one if you wanted to be in the NPA. Well, now you have a third option, and that is to join the TNP militia. And I think one of the coolest things about it is how we've gone out of our way to make the bar to entry not as, like, daunting, if that makes sense, um, to where, you know, people can participate without necessarily feeling like, it's something that they're going to otherwise have to change their habits for. Because you already log on to NS, you already go on the RMB or read your telegrams or do this and do that. So it's like, you may as well be able to support your region and the cause as you do it. So I'm actually very excited about that. And we've been seeing some positive results from that. Yeah, I'm, I'm just imagining uh, ropes in this big ass tank or something and just uh, riding over to the. Uh battlefield and just dumping a bunch of uh, R&B conscripts uh, on the battlefield and just telling them, shoot at that and uh, there we go, bye-bye <laughs> with uh, like Icarus and Zaz shouting orders and uh, 9003 doing drone attacks or something with his uh, tech. It's just, that's yeah. just my visual look at this whole thing. Yeah, and I know but, that like conceptually the idea of getting game side people to engage with R&D is not a new idea, right? But in TNP, it's not something that we've done before. And it's an idea that I feel, I feel especially like responsible for in the sense of like being proud to take ownership of what we do in the militia. Because I know that, you know, while, while Comfed and Cash may very well have done so had I not um, been there to help, you know, manage that, I definitely do feel like I have a vision for it, and so I'm very happy with the progress we've been able to make with that, and I like how it's been set up in like an organizational way to hopefully get the most out of our numbers. Because yeah, being a GCR with the activity levels that we have on the RMB and on game side, um, it's definitely a untapped well of potential that hopefully we can now reach out to and see the benefits of, you know? Yeah, and regular enlistment, as as was already said, 
gone up. I've invested myself because because of the war. Otherwise, I would never, ever, 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 ever engage in uh, R&D because I do not want to touch that part of the site. But um, this war and stuff has made me realize that R&D is incredibly fun and uh, the NPA is such a great place to learn about it and engage in Libcord, uh, where there are so many great people who are willing to help you out if you don't get it, uh, which is basically me. I don't get R&D and all the technical uh, things, but you know, it's so incredibly fun. And I encourage everyone listening to this uh, to go and uh, enlist in the NPA or whatever military you're a part of, uh, except of course, the Brotherhood of Malice and the People's Revolutionary Air Force. Uh, go and listen yeah. out with us instead. <laughs> and uh, not them. <laughs> yeah. And um, do your duty to uh, defend the North. We have a poster for that. Absolutely. Take up arms, defend your home. That's the slogan that I put for this, um, especially for our like mass mobilization campaign um, internally. But yeah, no. Uh that's a really good kind of like testament from Ruben there. Someone who didn't think that they were going to like R&D, you know, and as it turned out, it's pretty fun. So, hey, I'm not saying it could be you, but it could be you if you're not in the NPA already. And um, as as Ruben can also attest to with the whole we're we're a pretty nice bunch. If you don't get it, we're absolutely cool to sit there and explain it to you. In fact, there was a night, I think it might have been your first operation, where I was like, hey, are you able to VC right now? And you're like, yeah. And I just went through step by step, kind of explaining what all the terms meant and what everybody was doing, why they were doing it, stuff like that. You know, I'm totally willing to do that. And I know that there are multiple other experienced updaters who are willing to do the same here in the NPA. So it's not one of those things where it's like a super high bar. Like, if you don't understand it, we'll leave you in the dust. No. It's one of those things we'll help you along, uh, make sure you understand what's going on, and uh, hopefully, you know, get you to a point where you're having fun with it. So that's really what we're shooting for here as we're Pisces. You no, know, have robes, jump into a VC with me and explain everything, which, you know, that was awesome. And also in Libcord, a lot of nice people over there as well, with all of the uh, defenders and a couple of independents. Um it's just such a vibe to just sit in VCs, VCs and, um, you know, just chat about the operation. Or Yeah, it's it's just so much fun. And I encourage everyone to check it out because you might not expect it to be as fun as it might be. Um, you know, it's a missed opportunity if you don't. Yeah, and that's one of those things I feel like people get this impression that updating is just like you show up. You do your WA thing, you do, you listen to somebody give orders and then you just leave and go to sleep for the night or whatever. But no, there's actually like a whole kind of camaraderie aspect to it. There's VCs sometimes, you get to talk with people before the jump, stuff like that. It's, it's a fun, it's a fun atmosphere with a lot of cool people. Or... There's a, another a few things that Comfed would like me to make mention of. The liberation of Far Eastern Oriental Federation or Far East Oriental Federation rather. Um, that was a region that was held and, uh, we were successful in liberating it. A, you know, native aligned governor has been, uh, installed. Um, and then more recently, obviously there were several sieges lined up against the Philippines region, which is currently being held while, um, victory hasn't been achieved there. We definitely did get to a position where it could have been achieved quite well. Uh, the valiant efforts of people update after update really kind of from showcase the relentlessness that uh, our cause has when approaching this war. So it was a really good thing for morale to just see that many people mobilize for our cause. And, and of course, the, the cause being for the natives, but the, the overarching cause be in the fight against TCB, BOM, TBH, and to a lesser extent, LWU for some regions in the coalition. So. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, Spar but Sparkalia was, was the one holding Philippines, and the other one was the Blackhawks. Right, but, you know, with the battle of the Philippines, not every battle is going to be won, but that doesn't mean the war is lost or anything, because we 
liberated uh, Far Eastern Orientalist uh, Federation or something. And we took out Solidarity, which is a very major win on our side. Oh, so, it just said Solidarity and then mic drop. And, yeah, no yeah literally. Like, um, Solidarity was probably the uh, funnest operation I've been a part of because I to I piled after um, Queb um, DM'd me about it and said, like, hey, do you want to do this? And then... And then and I said, like, but my endorsements. And um, after a while, I did uh, go pile on my, um, what is it, Malicious Brother Ruben uh, Nation or something. Um, and it was great fun. The The vibe over there was um, was very fun. And, it's, and it was really funny to uh, see the prof um, lose uh, or fail to lib update after update. Um, yeah, it was great fun. So this might also happen with another operation. So go join and enlist in in the NPA and maybe you'll, you'll experience it too if you haven't already. So you know, Explain the irony behind the malicious Ruben name, the malicious brother Ruben name. Sure. Um, so basically when I was still a citizen in TCB, I um, had a citizenship and residency in three other regions i want to say uh in the leftist assembly the brotherhood of malice and osiris so basically i was full on radar aligned um and the resident nation i had in bom was malicious brother ruben uh, <laughs> and now it is an amazing flag which i can probably post uh it is the most glorious thing um pretty much that so yeah, defense has had a number of good things going on. Uh, numbers are up, ops are up. I know we've been doing several training operations with some of our newer members. We have some very promising crop of uh, soldiers coming up. And I, and I talked about this with ComFed before, but it really does feel like we're kind of like introducing the next generation of NBAers to the game of R&D. And I think that, they, that he would agree with me in saying that that is a pretty rewarding feeling, especially when you're able to you know be a leader and be able to do that. I think that it's uh, a great experience for our troops to kind of be there in the thick of it. You know, obviously these aren't the ideal conditions that every single NPA or will will be accustomed to when they first join, but these are the cards we're dealt, and I think we're handling it quite well. I would say. Ghost, did you have anything you wanted to add on the defense front? Because I know you're also present there. Um, not really, because you know you can't get too in the weeds with the specifics when you have an ongoing war and there's plans and stuff. So as far as like public facing stuff, I'd say, yeah, that's probably good enough. That's probably a safe bet. Well, all right. Yeah. Defense has been performing strong. Uh, that is, that is the bottom line with that. And you love to see it. So we'll be looking to continue that. Home affairs. I'll, I'll just, you know, shift the gears here and just address my thoughts on home affairs. I think, uh, the unsung hero of our region, very important work that has to be done. It's constantly being done. It's uh, very similar to what you've seen in past terms. Um, I don't think any of us can really do justice to it, not being uh, on the ground there ourselves, uh, doing a lot of the stuff that they do. But uh, innovation-wise, uh, I just would always give shout-outs to Lion because um, the, the way the game set advocates have been operating they've been the most organized and consistent i've ever seen them reminds me a lot of how culture's going for consistency ha is doing the same thing uh we've seen organized lists and and communications and such in the past but just really testament to lion's leadership and and how everything's organized it's 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 fantastic organizationally uh results wise i think you know, if we're going to have all this recruitment with defense, for example, I think HA plays some part in that. I don't, I can't, I don't know if I can put metric on it, but if we didn't have someone trying to tie all these things together, I don't think they would work as well if we just relied on uh, natural defense messaging. Uh, those RB posts are very important. I know I, I sometimes am guilty of feeling kind of spammed how many times, you know, I get pinged on them, but. Uh, how fast that r b moves, well, those messages are essential, I think, in 
keeping all the things on the surface that we want to keep on the surface. And uh, they deserve a lot of props for that. But can't say I really have any specifics on projects or anything. It's HA is reliable. They do the same thing. They're doing it well. Um, I really couldn't say anything more specific on that. Hopefully Ruben, the deputy of everything, has some more insight on that. <laughs> uh, Ruben, didn't you actually resign recently? Yeah, I did actually uh, resign a couple of days ago uh, from my positions of game site advocate, uh, home affairs deputy minister, and just overall staffer in the ministry. Uh, because, well, I st stated my reason in the in the resignation post. I played this game to have fun, and I didn't have fun, so I resigned. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, it's not like I resign immediately if I don't have fun. It's it's you know a gradual process. If I um, haven't had fun for maybe a month or more, then I I just don't. I'm not gonna do things I do not want to do because this is a, this is a game. This is my hobby. Uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty reasonable. But uh, from what I know is going on, uh, the game side advocates have been doing really great with the advertisement posting and um, home affairs with the lists and the mentees is uh, still gro going pretty well, I think. Engagement is pretty low um, because it, the tasks are very mundane and very boring um, and there's not a lot to, you know, spark it up and make it fun so you know that makes it really challenging to manage the ministry but i think lions roar is doing a pretty good job at that uh, in regard to more specifics i actually do have a few things that lions roar did want me to mention for this broadcast but uh kind of like a piggyback to what ghost was saying about the game side advocates yeah absolutely they've been top notch this term simply phenomenal and i thank them you know on a few occasions for the work that they've done especially with some of the campaigns that uh, I've been running for, like, people to join communications and stuff like that. But no, they've been doing great as far as, you know, just getting things as visible as possible, which is what you want to have happen. And I think they've been very organized and consistent in that regard, especially uh, Marcus, among others, um, with some of their postings. And, you know, one of the things that I think kind of does serve as a driving for that is that Home Affairs is a bit, uh, it's been characterized before as more thankless. And I was just having a conversation with Lion the other day in which uh, it became very clear that, that, that he enjoys this, you know. It's not every day that we get people who not only, you know, do it for, for the region, for the cause, but also enjoy doing it. And I think that's what's very um, special about Lion's tenure in office thus far. And that's a really good thing to see. Um, and I'm, and I'm glad that the, the GAs are very, you know, consistent and motivated by Lion to continue doing what they do, because I think that we've had good results in that. Uh, personally, I don't mind being mentioned that many times in a day. I actually think that it's a great way, you know, for me to see that, you know, hey, you're, they're actually promoting the things that I've given them. I think that they're doing a great job. And in, and in many cases, they actually, you know, take the extra step and not just promote what I've given them, but some of them, you know, they... They take their own twists on it and kind of, you know, pattern it after their nation since they're the ones posting it. Oh, yeah, that's probably where people would have, or if they were going to have fun with that often wrote and very, you know, the same old, same old kind of work. It's not for everyone. I could see why, you know, you know, obviously it wasn't for Ruben. Yeah. Um, there are people that enjoy it even without putting a spin on it. But I think there are opportunities for people in HA to be creative with the messaging and I think maybe, interestingly enough, if I had to give a tip to HA, it would probably be that they should take a, a page from Com's book if they want to kind of put some variety. I think there should be more uh, collaboration in the ministry on how they're going to get the communications out and what form they'll take. I think um, one of the things I was hoping for with the Northern Notes when that was first pioneered was it would give HA an opportunity to do something like that, to... Uh, be involved in something similar to comms, a collaborative writing process, because all it was about was getting the message out. So it's not like writing opinion pieces. It's where we're telling the news, we're telling, we're giving people an idea of what's going on, and we're putting an interesting spin on it. We're trying to be fun and creative with it. And 
I think HA doesn't have a lot of that in their internal culture. And that's just because HA does very important work and it's always being done and it's what works. You do what works over time. And so HA is just this machine and we have to always find ways to get people engaged. And I think there's a lot of room to improve in that area. Um, I think Ruben would agree with me on that. And, and maybe, you know, in the future, if HA gets uh, a little more inventive, people like Ruben might be more inclined to participate in it. So um, I'm very proud of what they're doing. And I think the, the results speak for themselves. Uh, there's always room to improve in every area. I think HA just uh, is more prone to fatigue and not having something more unique to point out. Like I, I wish I could have said more specific things about how they're in reinventing the wheel, kind of. But no, the wheel's good. It turns. It does what it needs to do. We're happy about that. So keep on turning, wheel. We're very glad. But yeah, maybe some reinvention of the wheel could make HA work even better. Just, yeah, my two cents on that. Um, From Lion, so we, we've seen the reintroduction of the welcome wagon. I know that was something that happened actually quite a few terms ago, but we, we have it back now, the welcome wagon. Again, it's just one of those things that it goes along with our community values of being welcoming and opening to newcomers. Uh, the welcome wagon is there. I know that there's also like the birthday party strike group, which we've seen actually over the last couple of days with some TNPers having birthdays. Lions Roar and others are always there. So that's kind of nice to see just the little things that you can do to kind of, you know, bring bring people and the community together in a way that, um, you know, is conducive to a regional identity. Uh, they've also updated the procedure for their mentor list. So I know that uh, they do like mentorship of players who maybe don't really know where they'd like to get involved in TNP. I know that that's something that AJ takes care of as far as like the integration aspect of it. Um, he says that they're currently working on a point system, which I'm interpreting as meaning like for staffers, like internal rewards kind of thing uh, for people who do, you know, the work that is oftentimes not very exciting, but very needed. And they are also trying to get a recruitment bot, they said, which I think that could actually be quite big. I don't have the details on that, but this is what I was told. So we might be able to see that coming soon. And I think that could be quite cool because even just on this program before, I've talked about how important, in my opinion, recruitment is, um, especially in a post frontiers and strongholds landscape. So that'll be cool to see. And then lastly, I, I intentionally left this part off of columns and, and gave it to the HA section because it's something we've been talking about um, more recently over the course of the last couple of days. But uh, here on the NBS radio channel on YouTube, there is a playlist called Nation States Tutorials. And those were tutorials that were recorded uh, a, couple, a few years ago at this point, I believe, by Elfie G. Grande, former Minister of Communications in which they originally they were kind of meant to serve as video accompaniments of, you know, the more lengthy text tutorials that we could give to newcomers. Um, and it's recently been proposed to me that HA would like to work with comms to kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not only redo those, because some of the old information could still be, you know, usable and stuff like that, but just sort of bring them up to date in a way to where we can really push that to help people find their footing. And I think that's a great idea. I said that I would absolutely be willing to lend my voice to that, just as Fiji originally did with the tutorials. So uh, when you think HA and you think, you know, recruitment, integration, bringing people in, getting them used to the region, I think that could be, you know, the next logical progression. So I'm, I'm excited for that uh, and the work that my staffers can do on that in uh, cooperation with HA to kind of get some of that going. But yeah, um, HA also, you know, aims for the consistency that culture does. Its uh, tasks might not be as creative as culture, but it's one of those things where, you know, the wheels are turning and you don't necessarily see it, but, you, but it's good that you don't see it in the sense that if you did see it, it would mean something's off. So... I think we can yeah. appreciate Lions Roar for that. Yeah. Um, I always view home affairs and, you know, most internal ministries or domestic ministries 
as the backbone of the region. They're always there. You can always rely on them and they are essential to, you know, the survival of the region because they are our integration and with, you know, the game side advocates and, you know, these recruitment drives and whatever, um, they, they make it so we get new blood, which is, you know, really important for, especially for a feeder because, and now in the frontiers era where it's not guaranteed that we get, uh, every single spawn and every single newcomer who is willing to do stuff. So especially now in this new period, we have to be especially conscious of the fact that it's not guaranteed that we get, um, new people, um, because, you know, of the frontiers. So it's really commendable how well, um, Lions Roar has picked up the task and, um, is doing such an amazing job at, you know, managing the ministry, managing integration, and doing his best as lead Gameside Africa, despite, you know, the two resignations, uh, because I believe Cloud also resigned because of, oh, uh, oh yeah, and Chipotle, because uh, I believe it was Cloud because he was swamped with work as speaker. And me, obviously, and Chipotle, I don't know. I didn't uh, see any resign resignation posts, but, you know, yeah, that. Yeah, so it's chugging along. Um, so, yeah, HA's going pretty well so far. Um, you love to see it. Maybe some future tutorial videos going on with comms, but, yeah. Moving right along to the second to last ministry that we're going to be talking about today, which is World Assembly Affairs. The most notable change actually came a day or so ago with the resignation of former minister Mitch Castle and the subsequent appointment of Simone, Simone Republic, to be TNP's Minister of World Assembly Affairs. Um, I've seen Simone around and so has Ghost for a number of months now. As a deputy minister of World Assembly Affairs, I've worked with them before, um, and I know that they were mages number two in a way similar to how Ruben is my number two. Um, so it seems like a very logical choice from Cash to appoint Simone. And uh, hopefully that will be kind of a good way to bring continuity to where WA is headed at the moment. I think uh, it makes sense for Simone to take over. WA Affairs is another one of those ministries where... It's business as usual until, and it, it's good that it's business as usual because, again, you'd notice if it wasn't. So getting IFVs out, voting threads up, things of that nature, I mean, that's your bread and butter. That's what you got to get done. And I think the team thus far has done a pretty good job of it. Uh, I know that Ghost, as our delegate in-game at the moment, uh, has been pretty good about voting. I know that that's something we kind of strayed away from in maybe the past term or two with, with voting early and voting often. But I know that's one of his personal mantras. So it's good to see a return to that. And I know that Cash is pleased with that. Um, and W Affairs, again, it, 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 it's business as usual, but also there are some internal little, little tweaks and innovations being made as far as how IFV dispatches are posted and kind of some workarounds for tech you know, being on a boat, I think Mage That's Castle. been the most important thing, yeah. Yeah, the, Mage Castle has done some great work with that and kind of like a new dispatch delivery system and stuff like that, teaching deputies how to use it and just making sure that we're able to get voters the information that they need as quickly as we can, but also with, you know, in a place that they're going to know where it's at. And we see this with the WFE where it has, you know, the IFVs linked. It lets people know, hey, here's our recommendations. Here's what the ministry, you know, advocates for. And I think we've we've been pretty proactive with that thus far. And so what do you think um, about the game side voting mechanism that Mage Castle was champion? Because I know there was a lot of uh, growing pains with that. And, you know, seeing as he's not charged anymore, I'm curious to see what will become of that. Because uh, based on how difficult it's been to get it off the ground and get it working, I'm... Um, 
I'm kind of starting to wonder if it's going to just get phased out. Ruben, do you want to take that one? Um, on the game side voting thing, um, well, I mean, it's it's not going to work. The, yeah, I mean, to, be, to, to just be completely frank, it's not going to work. Um, it, yeah, it's... Um, Forum side voting is superior in every single way, and uh, having some kind of I don't even really know what it does, but you know, game side voting, it's never gonna work, I think. But I'm, I would love to be proven wrong. Um, yeah, that's my two cents. I don't know how it works. I can't really comment on it. You know, to be completely honest. I think, in a way, it's actually kind of good that you're getting multiple perspectives, even just from the three of us. So it's not like everything, like not everything you you do is gonna be a home run. Nobody bats a thousand, as the saying goes. So you know, one of the one of the important things for the executive is to be adaptive when things don't work. And you know, like Ghost said, it, it has taken a while to get off the ground, and it's not something as a general like initiative that everyone was in agreement on. Uh, Mage Castle champion did, but yeah, I think that's a valid question. Where does it go from here? Or if Simone intends to do something with that, and I'm sure that's something that you could ask them. I personally haven't asked them, um, so I really can't speak to that. But no, that that it definitely is a fair question, and everyone can kind of make up their own, you know, talking points as to what they think works and what they think doesn't. It's valid. Yeah, that's about all I could say about WA Affairs at the moment. Yeah, w- yeah, I don't really know that much. WA Affairs, another one of those areas where consistency is key, and that's kind of the short. I'm I'm just glad it seems like they're not relying on just one person for everything. No, or there's not. Writing stuff, it, you know, that we were in that situation a few terms ago. So I don't, nice I don't feel kind of like about that. From kind of looking in, and I, and I do, you know, I told Mage early on that I was going to mostly be focused on comms, I know, but I do pop in there every now and then and help out when necessary. And from what I've seen, I think it's good that we have staffers writing IFEs. It's not just Mage or Simone every single time. Um, of course, they're kind of the facilitators and the guiding um, hands of it, but I do think it's good to see, you know, I know Ara, for example, staffer, write some of them. Um and I don't. I definitely don't think it's a one-man show, which is, you know, unfortunately, as we've seen in TNP history, something that WA is particularly susceptible to. We saw it way back when with T-Lums, we've seen it with Creed Talks, we've seen it with, you know, ministers of the past. And, and thankfully, I don't think that's the case here. So that's a pretty good sign as far as the health of WA affairs is concerned. I just realized I never even answered you when you asked me how I personally think about the game side of anything. The answer to that is that I don't have a thought on it because I'm a forum side voter and I intend to keep it that way. I also only mostly vote in the USC, so I like to stick to what I know. I can't, I can't, I can't really speak on that because I don't know. All right, Ghost. You wanted to leave this one to the end, so uh, we're gonna leave this one to the end. I, I'm sure you. And uh, it's already it's already a long show, so like uh, something planned for us. We're at the we're at the. Oh uh, no! Don't don't one overhype, hour, please. One hour and two minute mark. Lay it on us. Let's go. I just thought that this would be the easiest way to you know open up broader discussion topics outside of uh, you know once we cover the midterm stuff, just like a, get a bigger picture of the game and stuff, and that seemed like a more fruitful opportunity for conversation that's why i thought it would make sense to do this last but um uh, I'll, I'll i'll start with the bread and butter list stuff so obviously we're very pleased that in this term we were able to solidify two new treaties with our allies uh, in the wellspring and carcassonne and relay uh relying on the fact that we had an alliance with taija too and uh obviously their community has shifted and changed. And so we kind of retired that that treaty because the region itself is more or less retired and lives on in its new frontier form. And so, uh, you know, I won't pretend that those are like some big 
pie in the sky achievements that we got done. Those are very basic uh, solidifying existing relationships that we already had. Uh, they're no brainers. Uh, you know, still they enhance our tree network and having the fact that they're both frontiers, I feel bodes well for our future as far as positioning ourselves in the new frontier strongholds environment, because those new allies of ours also happen to be what I consider to be two of the, uh, the top of the, let's call them pure frontiers because uh, to distinguish them from, say, Euro and the League, which were pre-existing regions with a long history, these are regions that were formed when the frontiers started. They they were always with that in mind. They were their whole identities basically wrapped into that whole new frontier uh, environment. So I see it as us making gains in a very important new area especially in a day when we're going to need more help because our numbers are naturally going to go down because of frontiers. Our WA vote's not going as far as it used to go. So having allies that we can count on to bolster us in those areas kind of makes up some of that ground that we've lost. And there's a lot of opportunity in the frontier world. Uh, There's a lot of opportunity in us uh, having a say in, uh, say, the frontierism angle of things. Uh, if if there is a new philosophy that's going to say this is acceptable rating, and we have a very particular opinion of what rating is, then I like the the fact that you know we have two allies that are in the middle of all of that, and we could kind of avoid what the raiders I I believe certainly thought they could get out of this at the time, which was new allies to bolster their rating numbers, and and what we've seen instead is a complete deterioration of the relationship between the major raider organizations and these frontier regions. And instead, we're getting very good relations with them. So I think the way things have played out, uh, I'm I'm very optimistic about it. And it certainly played out the way we would have wanted to see it go. So uh, I think building more bridges there, uh, one opportunity with community, for example, since they're already close with those allies of ours, if we reach out and we get better relations with them, I think we can start to see a very strong um, alliance that, in my view, is kind of like the URA almost. You know, all these frontiers kind of united together. Um, they're, they've already done it, and we're going to be strong with them. We already have ties with some of their key players. It's just an opportunity for us to uh, be more involved in, in another sphere of the game besides the one that we've been in for like a decade now, you know, the independent sphere. And you've seen the changes that have happened there. You've seen the increasing influence of the defenders, a Euro being a defender region now. Uh, obviously, uh, things are kind of in flux. So uh, finding, pardon the pun, a new frontier for our foreign relations at this time is crucial. I'm very glad that Cash sees that that vision and that we've actually uh, put some investment down there. So uh, as far as that goes... Very proud of that work. Uh, as you said, the communications we've been putting out, the releases, still doing that. Uh, we've had to move a few things around in our embassies. Um, with war, a lot of stuff is happening. Uh, sadly, we are now an enemy of the SLU by their own declaration. So uh, like four of our key players are uh, enemies of of the union. So that relationship is, is over. Uh, but you might remember we, their relationship though. Well, yeah, there was, um, maybe it was mostly because of me since I used to be in TVF and, you know, I was allied to SLU and I kind of helped build that relationship. And we were there when, when their founder decided to lose his mind and steal their region from them. And, uh, we supported them. And, uh, unfortunately, we're at odds because because of the war and that that's what happens you, you, you kind of have to touch base with your allies and your friends and see where everyone stands when stuff like this happens we've had to do the same thing with the east pacific um right after we got attacked obviously one of the things that uh our former acting delegate did was uh get involved in the raid on war zone trinidad and uh, that was an embassy partner of the east pacific they were not happy that we did that we've had to uh, talk to Euro following 
uh, events with El Wu and, and the declaration of war because we weren't inclined to declare war on them. We wanted to make sure there wasn't going to be friction with us and them and, and with the MGC because obviously uh, the West Pacific and the Pacific are allied to El Wu. So there were potential pitfalls there with our MGC alliance. Uh, communication is always important, but it is downright essential and possibly lethal if you don't do it right in this environment when you're at war. So uh, we've been running around talking to lots of people, lots of talking, and it's not very exciting to deliver uh, a report on what FA is doing when it involves a lot of talking, but there's a lot of talking. And sometimes uh, it goes better than other times, but you want to know where everybody stands. War, as I've said, when we've discussed the possibility of going to war, and then when we discussed the fact that we were at war, war has a habit of clearing things up, making it very clear where everybody stands. They can't be as wishy-washy and, and try to stay in the middle. And when they do, there's pressures on both sides that are going to come into play. And so uh, we're... I'd say we have a much clearer idea of where things stand compared to when we started this, where everybody's at, and well, where we go from here. And if I can go backward to WA for just a second, I feel that uh, the sanctions have kind of taken on new life in, in view of a new target with the communist bloc now being at war with us. And now that we were seeing the sanctions are obviously having an impact on the General Assembly votes because that's where TCB is active. Whereas before, uh, BOM was mostly concerned with SC resolutions. And a lot of people are okay with messing up SC resolutions, but GA is kind of a different frontier. There's the idea of, uh, what about quorum rating? Is quorum rating acceptable when you're at war? And I would say, uh, I would remind people that we never rule that out. We've always directed it in the past at fascist resolutions and, and fascist regions. Uh, but uh, don't forget, on alignment was very clear. When we raid, it is when it's in our interest. And, and when we're at war, the, that opens some doors. So um, that's something that we have to be weighing and, and being very careful about as we go forward. Because just because you reserve the right to take an action doesn't mean the action the consequences of that action aren't going to be potentially more of a problem for you. So that's another thing we've really been weighing. And uh, I'm hoping that as these new relationships we've formed start to blossom, as, as these uh, regions, these frontier regions are growing, uh, it will also allow us opportunities to get the other parts of government involved, get more uh, joint events get some stuff of culture. Uh, I'd like to see the other ministries, like, like I'll, I'll say comms now, I'd like to see them take on a project that involves other regions and it's like a joint effort. It's something like what culture would do, but in the publication sphere, maybe a joint statement. I, I was kind of inspired in, in part by the frontierism when that, when that article on that was drafted and how it had input from multiple regions. Why not have, have a publication that has multiple hands from different regions involved in it? You know, culture doesn't just have to be, let's go to a Discord server and, and dance and, and listen to music and play silly games. You can also collaborate on, on significant written pieces and, and publications and stuff like that. Just, just a thought I had. Anyway, um, struggling to think of anything else because, you know, writing multiple treaties and... Oh, yeah, obviously, um, we uh, have been in talks with other regions. I, I mentioned the possibility of some, doing something with the community, something we'd, we'd like to look at. Um, it should come as no surprise to our domestic audience. And I'll, I will mention this now because we're, we're pretty much at the, at the end point. Uh, we're looking at uh, better relations with the League in particular. Um, you might recall we were already doing that when uh, Boston was delegate at the beginning of the year, and that kind of got uh, interrupted and canceled because of the whole extortion thing. And we're very happy in, in the months since that the league in particular has been a very good partner on every single uh, initiative that we've embarked on 
in responding to BOM. And uh, I think they've made up for their role in that transgression. I, I do take them seriously that they uh, recognized it was an error, that they felt bad about it. Uh, I, I, I guess some people will never know how much you can believe people actually feel bad about what they did or if they just feel bad they got caught. But I think I've seen that second category in some people, and I could definitely distinguish it from our work with the league. So I'm very excited about moving forward with the possibility of a non-aggression pact with the league and Concord. And uh, I hope when it gets to vote that we'll be able to easily pass it and get that official and and get them on the books as as one of the best new allies that we've got in this game at this time. And that's about all the specifics I can think of, unless you had any questions since I'm here, you know? Uh, yeah, so that is uh, the law of pretty much, I was going to say a summary, but more more elaborative than a summary of uh, where the government is at at this point. Things are chugging along, things are getting achieved, uh, and new relationships are being formed, and that's what you like to see. There are a lot of positives here. I know that Ghost and I personally can speak on those. I think that our delegate has really grown into the role. And dare I say, probably surprised some people, you know, uh, first time delegates sometimes do take a while to find their footing, but from the discussions that we've had with Cash, I would say that, uh, he, he's kind of found his stride, especially in, uh, the last month or so. I think, uh, we've had a great start to the term. So I look forward to seeing that continue. And, um, yeah, I'm always happy to serve the region. Well, you know, with all of the discussion of the government stuff out of the way, uh, I guess since I kind of opened the door to this possibility conversation-wise, which was what I was trying to do, um, what do you think the last half of the term is going to look like? What do you think um, how these things will develop and, and change uh, and big picture for the game itself, where we're at now versus where we'll be when you know January rolls around? What do you think? How do you think this is going to proceed? What does it look like? That is a very loaded question, Ghost. Oh, yeah, you never think about the big picture of nation states and what the consequences of all the stuff we're working on now ends up being? I mean, what? I can tell you that for Tom. I'm not talking about comms. I'm talking I, can about tell you, I can tell you probably that for the militia. I mean... Okay, so go ahead, do it. I mean, for columns, we're obviously going to get uh, as much use as possible out of the collaborative design team. I think we've been experimenting with some cool ways to advertise on the RMB without, like, po copy-pasting messages. Um, there was a wonderful kind of, like, flyer thing that uh, I'm trying out, where we just, like, post a link and see if people get curious and, you know, uh, check it out in that way on Imgur and stuff like that. I say Imgur, I'm not going to say Imgur. Um... Definitely the Northern Lights coming up. Uh, there's some things that we can do with the Northern Notes. Obviously, TNS continuing. I see that happening. Uh, I do think that we'll at least make a few tutorial videos to renew kind of uh, the previous efforts. As I mentioned, I think we will get some of those. I have indicated to HA that I am open to that, so I think we'll get forward with that. And, uh, yeah, I think developing some of the internal talents of our staffers that we've seen really come to prominence is going to be another thing because, you know, it does take time for that to happen, but I think that uh, there are a few staffers we have that are well on their way to uh, becoming core contributors for both the ministry and the region. So I look forward to seeing that happen and uh, doing what I can to help, you know, kind of manage things. So that's what I think for columns is going to happen. And for the NPA, I really think uh, we're going to continue to have some successes. We've we've pulled some great numbers that I would not have thought possible had we not had the surge in activity that we have. Um, this has really kind of shown us the resources we have available to us that we can use. And I think that there is more work to be done in harnessing those resources and mobilizing people in a way where um, the North can become even more of a force to be reckoned with on the battlefield. I think that's something that we want to see happen if we, you know, want to take those next steps towards uh, getting BOM and TCB uh, out of the picture. So 
I look forward to that, and uh, I also look forward to my 100th op in the UNPA. I'm at 99 right now. I will get my 100th here very soon, so I hope it's a special op when I get to do that. I hope it's, like, something kind of cool, which I'm sure it will be, but yeah, I, I have that to look forward to personally. And I look forward to, you know, helping train some of our newer recruits. I know that uh, Nutmeg, shout out to him again, got promoted to sergeant just yesterday. So hopefully soon we'll be doing some trigger training with him. And that'll be cool because we'll have a new officer who can trigger eventually with their, when they get to warrant officer and stuff like that. So it'll be a fun time. Big picture as far as the game, I couldn't say. Really couldn't say. What do you think will happen, Ruben? Well, uh, I uh, hope that we win, <laughs> is uh, all I can say. I mean, it's pretty obvious the, the Communist Bloc and the Brotherhood of Mattis do not have the same position as we do, not in the World Assembly, not on the R&D stage. Um, we're going to win. It's plain and simple. Um, yeah. Go North Pacific. Yay. <laughs> Unless any of our audience members have any questions about like more specific things for the ministry or anything that uh, they want us to answer, I think we can go ahead and end this one off. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here on MBS today. Uh, I hope it was informative. I hope it got some of you guys you know, more up to speed if you hadn't been following along. And I hope it gave you some things to look forward to because that's always kind of what we like to do here. Ended off on a positive note. These things are happening. Um, there's been some successes. There's been some areas for improvement. But overall, we're trending in a very positive direction. And I think there's a lot to be happy about and a lot to be proud of. So I look forward to that. And uh, hopefully, you know, we can have another broadcast here at the end of the term come January where we can kind of look all, at all of this in retrospect and, you know, uh, appreciate how far we've come. I think that's the goal. So I look forward to that. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> goodbye from Ruben, goodbye from Ghost, and goodbye from me. This is NBS Radio, signing off.